Well, the SEC released the 2024 conference schedule last night, and it is a doozy for everyone. The SEC didn't do the Gators any favors in what will be Billy Napier's third season at the helm. I'm going to tell you why it's actually good news for UF, and then I'm going to share something that you may not have realized. So let's jump right in. All right, y'all. First and foremost, the SEC is going to be exciting every freaking week, okay? There is not a team in the conference that got any kinds of favors from the SEC brass. Looking at this schedule, Florida gets LSU at home, Texas A&M at home, Ole Miss at home, Kentucky. Then their road games will be Georgia, which will still take place in Jacksonville, Mississippi State on the road at Tennessee, and they head to Texas for their Texas's inaugural season in the SEC. So that is an incredibly, incredibly difficult schedule. They lose Missouri, Vanderbilt, and South Carolina and pick up Mississippi State, Texas, and Ole Miss. That is pretty darn intense. I really, uh, you know, I think that this could be a really good thing for Florida, though, because every single week is going to be an incredible matchup. I think one of the things that we talk about in college football lately is that fans would rather watch from home, right? The comfort of their home where they can watch three or four games at one time. They're not spending the money to go to the stadiums. They're not spending the money at concession stands, on season tickets, on stuff like that, because they just have a better experience at home. I think that the SEC just said, Uh Uh-uh, not anymore. I think all of these SEC stadiums are going to be packed every single week because there is going to be marquee games every single week. There's not going to be that lag in the season where we're like, oh, it's, you know, the second week in October and, you know, we have one good game, but everybody else is kind of a patsy. Or we get to the, the week before rivalry week in November and everybody's playing some podunk school. That's not going to be the case anymore. There is good SEC football that is going to be happening eight weeks out of the year. And I think that we really do need to commend the SEC brass for preserving all of the super important rivalries. If you look across the SEC scheduling, they did such a good job. We did a video on this channel um, at the you know a couple of months ago when we talked about would we be a, would we have an eight game schedule, would we have a nine game schedule, and what could Florida's potential matchups be. And honestly, a lot of people thought Florida was going to lose LSU, that that was just not going to be a game that Florida was able to hang on to. And they did. They got to keep LSU. They got to keep Tennessee, another game that I feel like is really important to the University of Florida, to these rivalries. They kept Georgia, which I think if they only got to keep one rivalry, that would be the one that the SEC brass gave them, but they got to keep it. They preserved all of those things. But you look across the conference, Alabama still plays Tennessee. They still play Auburn. Uh, Arkansas still plays LSU. They're going to play Texas. Georgia still plays Auburn. They still play Tennessee. Some of these really important matchups still exist. We're still going to get an LSU Alabama game every, you know, for the next couple of years. We're going to get an Ole Miss Mississippi State. We're going to get an Ole Miss LSU. These really fun games that we are used to seeing in this conference remain. And then I think they did a really good job splitting up the other games pretty fairly across the board, but they produced some really, really, really fun matchups to watch. I think everybody's going to be really excited. I am pumped that the Gators get to go to Austin. That's a game that I have circled on my calendar. Welcome Texas into the SEC. And, you know, one of these things that this schedule says to me is that I was wrong about arguing for a nine-game schedule, okay? We don't need nine games to stay competitive with the other conferences for the playoffs if it's going to be scheduled like this, right? You can take the Big Ten's nine-game schedule, the Big 12, the Pac-12, all of those, their nine-game schedules. They are not anywhere as intense as the eight-game schedules that the SEC is going to be producing in 2024. It's not going to even be close. But something that I am thinking about that I think will be interesting is what will the SEC do 
after the TV contracts come up for renewal? Will they go to a nine-game schedule or will they continue to schedule like this, this intensity of eight games and kind of see what the playoff committee does? Because if the playoff committee is only going to reward wins and losses without really diving into the strength of schedule and who's playing who week in and week out, I don't know that there's any benefit at all to the SEC to add that ninth game. Right. I mean, could you imagine a schedule this intense, but then add another week of intensity? We can't all play bandy for our ninth SEC game. It wouldn't be possible. This schedule is going to be such a gauntlet for all of these teams. I think it's going to be really hard for anybody to get through unscathed. I doubt anybody is undefeated at the end. So I just don't know the benefit to adding a ninth game if everybody is going to have such a hard schedule. And Florida in particular, is there a team in 2024 that has a more intense schedule across the board? Because I don't think there is. I think Florida will have the toughest schedule in America in 2024. Because not only do they have the eight SEC games that we talked about, but they play Florida State, they play Miami, and they play UCF. For those of you counting along at home, that is 11 power five games in what will be year three for Billy Napier. And, you know, we've talked on this channel a lot and you've seen in previous Florida coaching regimes, year three is generally a make or break year for you. But looking at this schedule, honestly, if Florida wins six or seven games with this schedule, I feel like that's going to be pretty good, particularly if they have DJ Lagway, a true freshman starting at quarterback. I mean, way to be thrown to the wolves, right? So I know Gator fans don't want to hear that. And listen, I'm certainly not rooting for a six and six or a seven and five season in year three for Billy Napier, but I just don't know how you look at this schedule and and you find more wins than that. It'll be interesting to see what Billy does with the talent that he has in and what he, how far he's able to develop them over the course of the next year because 2024 is whew, tough. But the flip side of that is that's going to be huge for recruiting. Players are going to see immediately positions that they're able to come in and contribute to. They're going to get to see the craziest game day atmospheres in the country week in and week out, no matter where they go on the visit. And I think that the SEC has just raised the bar. You don't need a two deep. You're going to need a three deep to play these kind of schedules that the SEC has set out. There is going to be opportunities for recruits to come in and see playing time almost immediately at all 16 programs, but particularly at a Florida, a place like Florida where they're already going to be able to sell playing time. There's going to be so much more available with a schedule like this. So I think that's something Billy Napier will use to his advantage, right? And, you know, the only gripe that I have about this schedule is that Florida is playing Texas A&M for the fifth time in 12 years. They don't play Auburn, however, who they've only played twice in the last 17 years. So I kind of wish Florida did get Auburn in there instead of Texas A&M, but I digress. This is a great schedule for the Gators. This is a great schedule for season ticket holders, for Gator fans. Gone are the days of I don't really want to drive up for that game. It's going to be a noon kickoff. Nobody's going to be there. It's not going to be that fun, and it's going to be a blowout. No. Every single week is going to be a bloodbath, not only for the Gators, but across the entire conference. That's good for the conference. That is great for teams that run this this gauntlet and then make it to the playoffs because Once you've played a schedule like this, the playoffs are going to be cake. The teams that you are going to be seeing in the playoffs are certainly not going to be battle tested like anybody coming out of the SEC is going to be. So, you know, I think from that, that perspective, this is great for every member of the conference. And, you know, listen. If you don't love this schedule, that's okay. I've been told by people close to the program that they don't expect that this schedule is going to last longer than probably two years. And just looking at the conference schedule as a whole, let's look at Texas and Oklahoma. Their only common opponent is each other. But common opponents is one of the tiebreakers to determine who goes to the conference championship game. So I can't imagine that the schedule can stay like this for too long. They are going to have to mix this up. They're going to have to be some common opponents for teams like Texas and Oklahoma. But if the 
The conference is waiting for that TV schedule to happen before they make any big changes. They only have to wait a couple of years. And in the meantime, we as the fans get to see the best college football in the country played right here in the SEC every single week. What are your thoughts? Did you think that one team got a better deal than another? I think Arkansas did. I think Arkansas is the only team that got maybe a little bit easier scheduled than anybody else. Are you looking forward to any games in 2024 more than others? I know that a lot of you have that Texas game circled, and I definitely do. Let's talk about it down below. Are you planning on going to Austin? Is that the one in 2024 that does it for you? Or is there another game that you're super excited to see on the schedule? An important part of how UF will do during the 2024 schedule is going to be based around recruiting. So if you want to get caught up on all things UF recruiting, click right here to do so.